There are so many examples of companies, including Microsoft, who have done that, and it's blown up in their face gloriously. AI didn't fail. The company right. failed, right? But now I think companies are starting to realize they got to step back a little bit and really understand the capabilities of these tools. I am the yin to your yang or something like that. Yeah, and, and look, I think we, we alluded to this um, last week when we talked about AI safety that, you know, in a lot of industries, the unfortunate saying is that every regulation is written in blood, right? It's written because someone or something got Something it. happened. Yeah. And we certainly have yet to see that happen in a, in a big, gloriously public way. But I think it's only a matter of time that we're going to see a company commit such a blunder with AI, right. an avoidable right. blunder, right. that it's going to make other companies sit up and notice. And look, I mean, you know, like I'm old enough to remember when that was the way it was with cybersecurity. Today, yeah. it's hard to find a board of directors that doesn't have a, a regular report from the chief information security officer, the CISO, right. right? Like CISO reporting to the board directly or indirectly is a thing that happens in an awful lot of companies today. Yes. But if you roll back 20 years, most board it members exists. had no idea what a CISO was because no. right, they didn't even exist as a role in a lot of companies. And where they did exist, the board wasn't aware of them. Right. And it took a, it took a series of very high profile and very expensive cybersecurity breaches at large companies mm -hmm. for the board to suddenly say, oh, this is something we need to have our eye on because this is, you know, could could destroy the company if we get this wrong. Right. Right. I think we are headed there with AI. I think that in a few years, the board is going to want to really track what is happening with AI, what guardrails a company is putting around AI, how they're deploying it both because it costs a lot of money and if you are foolish you can you can waste a lot of money but right. more importantly if you're careless you can cause enormous harm right i would caveat that a little bit differently only thing i would say is not a couple of years i think boards need to do that stuff now yeah they should be doing it now i think it'll be normalized in a couple of years yes i would say to anyone who is a non-executive director on a board right now if you don't have a regular report from someone who is looking at AI strategy and AI safety and the guardrails around it, either into your tech committee, your risk committee, or directly to the whole board, you have a gap. You have a governance gap that you need to close. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, and I don't think companies are taking it that serious yet. Most aren't, I should say, um, where they have somebody at the top of the house who's really deeply involved in driving strategy and making sure this is deployed the right way. I don't feel like most CEOs, I think a lot of them do what we said they were going to do, which is hand it off to the CIOs and let them do it, which is... So I was just about to ask you that because you said earlier, you're like, hey, this can't just be a technology project run like a bunch of other technology projects. And and we've we've repeated that when we tried to answer the yeah. question like, OK, how do you avoid being in the 95 percent that had the right. unhappy face? Who should run this? Uh, well, I think in light of not having a I think it, well, in light of not having a chief AI officer in a firm, I think it has to be some combination between the business and technology, unfortunately. And unfortunately, I think that's just the way it has to be. But I think the business has to be deeply, deeply, deeply involved uh, in picking the right projects, um, you know, helping make them successful in IT, obviously, I think part of the deployment. I I still think and will continue to think you really need somebody at, you know, reporting into the CEO who is deeply involved in these types of projects and can drive them forward. Because I think if you just even just, I don't know, head of your business unit, head of IT, you put them together, I think what normally happens is, the head of the business knows nothing about this, doesn't want to understand, and will still defer to IT and yeah. you're back where you started. And so that's not the answer because we saw that happen all the time when we worked in finance. You know, very often business you yes. know users, right or wrong, you had their exceptions, will just defer to technology to do what they need to do. And that's not so, the answer in this case. I agree. With with apologies to my former IT colleagues when I've had uh, roles in the IT department. Um this to me is a clear case where the business should lead and IT should support. And yes. and I think the difference between lead and support is massive in this. Massive. And if you get a business leader, to your point, if you have a business leader who abdicates that leadership and just sort of right. passes it off to his or her technology partner, that's not the kind of leadership we need here, right? No, we need real 
Yeah. You need real leadership. And you and I have been saying for uh, over a year, if not longer, close to two years, the CEO needs to be deeply involved. And I don't think they can punt this off to somebody else so easily. Not not at this stage. And in light of not having his, you know, an AI officer in the firm, the CEO really should be the proxy. They have to drive this, I think, personally, if you yeah. want it to be successful. And I think if on if you went through these three hundred cases that MIT looked at, I can guarantee you in probably every single case, um, right. there was not a high level of sponsorship in either any of them. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this podcast, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to us over on YouTube, and make sure to stay up to date with us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify as well. Yeah.